word from the Lord this morning. If you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the gospel according to Mark. Mark's gospel, chapter 11, verses 21 through 26. The word of the Lord this morning, the gospel according to Mark. Chapter 11, verses 21 through 26. When you're there, I want you to stand with me as we read the word of God. Mark 11, 21 through 26. If you don't have your Bible, read with somebody next to you. And when you're there, say amen. 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 Mark 11, 21 through 26. And the scriptures read thus, it says, And Peter called into remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whoever so have, say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe on those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, Whatever ye so desire, when you pray, Believe that you will receive them, and you will have them. And when they stood praying, forgive, if ye have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So you can be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. We come here to praise God this morning and we want to thank God for his blessing this morning. Amen. Mark Gospel is teaching us about faith. And my topic for you this morning is faith that will move a mountain. Amen. Faith that can move a mountain. And I know we all got some mountains in our life. We want to move out of the way, amen? All right. But I'm reminded of something Paul once said. Paul said, let us lay aside every weight the sin which do so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, looking unto the uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now is set down at the right hand of God on God's throne. So I'm here to tell you this morning, as a believer, if you are a believer in God, if you are a believer in Jesus, if you are a believer in the power of God's Holy Spirit, then you ought to pray, you ought to evangelize, you ought to minister, you ought to prophesy, you ought to honor, praise, and worship God in His kingdom. That's what we're called to do, amen? Everybody has to work inside of his calling. And everybody has a calling, amen? I mean, every single one of us has a calling. Because more than anything else, we are all called to serve, amen? amen. We're called to be servants of God. That's our calling. Some of us go a little higher, some of us go this way or that way, but whatever it is, we are all called to serve God, amen? amen. We are called to serve God. Jesus declared to his disciples, he said, we can move mountains if we have faith and no doubt. Amen. Amen. That's what he said in the scripture. You know, he said, if you believe and you have faith and no doubt, you can move a mountain. You can speak to a mountain and say, be thou removed and it'll be cast into the sea. Because faith minus doubt equals victory. Amen. Anybody want victory this morning? Yeah. So you must be a believer. Now, you know, it's easy to walk by faith when things are going well. Amen? But when difficulty comes, it's an entirely different kind of a situation. When we're going through some things we can't understand, then sometimes our faith wavers. 
And sometimes we have a little doubt. Doubt seeps in. But you keep on praying. You keep on believing. Amen. You keep on trusting God. You see. I don't know where the, uh, uh, the disciples, uh, when, when I think about where they was at the time, uh, I don't know where their faith was at that moment in their lives, but they were certainly challenged. You know, Peter was telling Jesus, he said, Lord, I remember when you spoke to a fig tree and you, you, you spoke to it, you cursed it and it dried and withered away. You know, when they were walking into Jerusalem and, 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 and Jesus saw this fig tree ahead, and he said, let's move toward that fig tree because it looked like it had some stuff going on. But when he got there, it had nothing but leaves on it. It had no figs. And Jesus cursed the tree and, 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 and it didn't have anything. And then it withered away when they saw it again. So they were amazed by that when they saw Jesus. He said, Lord, he spoke to a tree and it withered away. And so the, 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 the message is just that alone. God is saying, I want you to do something with your faith. I want you to do something. You know, your, your faith should bear some fruit. You know, but 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 when when God has given you something, He expects you to use it. So in other words, when He saw the fig tree, and it didn't have any figs on it, it wasn't bearing any fruit. God wants you to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Your good works is the fruits of your labor. Amen. And so when you just you know, some people just talk and you know talk a good game, but they don't do anything. You're like a fig tree with nothing but leaves on it. Amen. Amen. But I want you to know that you you, you got to have faith. You see, and the Bible tells us that we come to know that faith is something without it, it's impossible to please God. Yes. You cannot please God if you don't have faith. Amen. Amen. So you gotta have faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes. What does that mean? On this journey, we trust the invisible God to do the impossible. Amen. So there's a lot of things in our lives that we know is impossible with, with us, but nothing is impossible with God. Mm. Nothing is impossible. And I know the news, y'all got family about, about the little baby, you know, with sickness. Now, that may seem like an impossible thing for us, but it's not impossible with God, amen? And amen. watch God amen. move. Watch God move, amen? amen? Yes. Faith is critical on your journey. But I'm telling you this morning that we're going to talk about something here. And, and, and I'm telling you that there's something that, 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 that Jesus wants you to understand. Faith can move a mountain. Yeah. Faith, and then how do we do this? Well, faith must be put into action. It's not just something you just say, well, I got faith. It's got to be put into action. You know, it, faith has got to be a part of it. It's your belief, you know. How do we know that? He said, you got to follow Jesus' words. That's how do we do that. How do we put our faith into action? Well, we follow Jesus' word. Jesus said in verse 22, he said, he answered them and he said, have faith in God. When you, when you have faith in God, you put, now you put your faith in an action because you're taking, you know, you're saying, okay, I believe it. I have faith. I have faith in God. Have faith in God. They remember what Jesus did with the fig tree, so then now they're putting their faith in God. See, and it wasn't made, so Jesus used that. Jesus wants you to exercise your faith. You know, put it into action. It's one of those things you use it or you lose it. Amen. 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 Jesus is our lifeline. Jesus is our hope. And Jesus is our strength. We can do nothing on our own, but we must do it with faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you know, they remember that, 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 that they were walking and they start thinking about something Jesus did. You know, when they saw it, they said, Oh Lord, remember when you when you cast that that when you when you when you withered away that fig tree, they remember something. And so I'm telling you that this morning because I know there's something in your life you can remember that God did for you. Amen. And the guy said he witnesses him this witnesses this morning that don't want to talk about. In other words, everybody has something in their life when you think back on it. Say, oh yeah, I remember when God did this for yes, me. Lord. I remember yes. when a uh, man like I was sick as I don't know yes. what, and I know that I'm standing strong today, amen. God help you to recover from something you went through. So everybody has something that they can think about. God brought me through it. Amen. 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 Now they got some people Amen. running around here. Oh, you might. When I was lucky, you weren't lucky. You were blessed. Amen. Yeah. So as you remember the goodness of God, and guess what? If God did it before, God will do it again. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. And if God did it for me, He'll do it for you. If He did it for yes, you, He'll do it for me. Amen. Yes, Faith that will move a mountain. Verse twenty-three says. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and believe in those things 
they shall come to pass whatever you said. So if you speak something, you know that with the will and with the word of God, you can speak some things into existence. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can. Hmm. But you have to have faith and no doubt. See, that doubt is that thing that always creeps in. Oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. Oh, I don't know how this is going to work. So then you talk yourself out of a, 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 a victory. Don't talk yourself out of a, a victory. Jesus said, if you speak these things, you pray about these things, and you don't have any doubt in your heart. There's no doubt inside of me that God is able. Amen? There's no doubt inside of me that God can fix my problem. No doubt. I believe it. I know I can't fix it. That's why I take it to the Lord. Amen? <laughs> But here's something you got to pay attention to. They say, shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. Now, let me tell you something. It's not always instant. But the Bible says it shall come to pass. In other words, it's going to happen. Amen? Just hold on. That's why the Bible's talking about having patience. And so when you have patience, you say, I will patiently wait on the Lord. Amen? So don't, don't, don't try to rush nothing when you're asking God about it, amen? Because some people ask, you know, God fixed this for me. And, and, and the son, they're still going through it. They say, well, he didn't fix it. He didn't heal me. He hasn't done anything. Mm -hmm. I've been asking. Have faith. Amen. No doubt. Amen. Wait on the Lord, amen? amen? Sometimes God is taking you through something for a reason. Amen. 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 Yeah. Jesus met a man who was blind. And when he talked to that man, uh, people was telling the guy, said, you know, they got somebody coming here who might be able to heal you. And so when the man met Jesus, he had been blind. And Jesus said, let, let me do this. And Jesus walked away with him and took him away and they walked away from the city. Got away from everybody. Sometimes that's what God will do. He'll take you away from everybody because you got to get away from some folks sometimes. Amen? Because sometimes people are just nothing but naysayers. Even when you're about to be blessed, some people try to talk you out of a blessing. Amen? Yeah. And so Jesus tells this man, come with me and I'm going to show you something. And as they stood there, the Bible said, Jesus took and, 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 and spat in some clay and then washed this stuff on his eyes. And he said, now, tell me, when you wash your eyes, he said, what do you see? And the guy looked. He says, well, I, I, I kind of see uh, a little bit, but it's just like everything, look, the men and people I see look like trees. And then the Bible says that Jesus did the same thing again. And he put the stuff on his eyes, spit the clay water on his eyes, and I go wash your face and tell me what you see. And he says, whoa, I can see it clearly. Lord, yes. Now some people interpret that to say, well, it took Jesus two times to do it. No. What Jesus is trying to tell us, sometimes when the healing process is taking place, it's going to take you through just that, a process. He wants you to understand that sometimes if you just believe in what I'm telling you, if you just have faith, if you believe, if you have no doubt, you know, sometimes what you're going through may take a moment. Sometimes your healing may take a moment. But don't you give up. Don't you give in. And don't you give out. You keep holding on to God. Amen. amen. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Amen. Not about, you know, every time a, 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 a quick fix scheme is always just that, a scheme. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you how you can do it. You, you look at those programs on TV all the time. Everybody got a solution how they can fix a problem. Yeah, we got a cure for this and a cure for that and a cure for the other. You got high blood pressure? Well, all you got to do is have some garlic. Garlic will lower your blood pressure. You know how much garlic you have to eat to try to make a small dent in your blood pressure? A ton of it. But nobody's going to do that. Because if it was that simple, you put the doctors out of business. What I'm saying to you, sometimes if you just hold on to what God is doing for you, when you're going through something, keep on going through it with God. Amen? Because sometimes God won't take you out of the fire. God will get into the fire with you. Amen? Yes, he will. And he'll take you through it. He'll walk through it with you. But you got to have faith. Yes. But you got to put your faith into action. Jesus wants you to exercise your faith. Put it into action. Amen? Amen. Amen. I say to you, whosoever shall believe it, uh, the things he's asking for, he shall have it, it shall come to pass. And you know, at the, uh, and, and Jesus was talking to his disciples, and I believe, and it's just what, I'm just putting it into context that I believe and I think I understand. 
I think they were probably at the, at the Mount of Olives, you know, is where him and his disciples, I have read somewhere where him and his disciples used to go there at the base of Mount of Olives. Among the olive trees is a place where they used to go and pray a lot. And so that was like one of their favorite places to go and pray. And now when I think about that, now if Jesus and his disciples had a place they used to go and pray a lot, that tells me, that gives us an example we ought to follow. When we get together and we come to church, church is a place where we, a place where we come together and we praise God together, amen? amen? And we pray together, amen? Because when we come together in a special place, that's because God wants us to gather as born again believers, amen? amen. And when we come, there's something about strength in numbers. So when, I come, when we come together in our place, you know, we're among the olive trees this morning, praising God and praying yeah, to God. Yeah, and I'm telling yeah. you, God is going to answer some prayers this morning. God is going to bless somebody this morning. Amen. Yeah. You know, what a mighty God we serve, you know. And that's the reason why I think Jesus brought out the, the analogy saying that if you speak to that mountain, because he was probably somewhere near a mountain, and he looked at that just to give them an example, that if you speak to a mountain, say, be thou removed, and don't forget to leave out that crazy little thing called doubt. Leave doubt out, and God is going to change some things in your life. And I'm telling you this morning, you are going to start seeing the manifestation of God's miracles in your life. Amen. I'm telling you, you are going to see it. Believe it. Have no doubt. I don't have any doubt in my mind. God is going to fix your things. Amen. Jesus wants you to know that you have power at your disposal. You have the power of prayer. Amen. And it's at your disposal. Mountains are big obstacles in our lives. But guess what? The bigger the problem, the bigger the God. Amen. Amen. We have big problems. You got a big God you're serving. Amen. And I'm telling you that faith can move a mountain. Verse 24, he said, therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you desire, when you pray, Believe that you will receive them, you shall have them. If you're praying about something right now, believe it. Amen. That's all I'm telling you. If you, I don't care what it is you're praying about, believe it. Whatever you are praying about right now, believe it. Yes. Believe it, and I'm telling you, you're going to have it. Amen? Yes. Believe it. Don't let no doubt it kick into you. Believers rely on the promise that God is the greatest deliverer of his promise. He don't break his promises. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew 7, 7, 8, uh, 7 through 8, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And everyone that seeks will find. And everybody who knocks, it will be open unto you. All believers, you keep looking unto the hill from which cometh your help, because your help comes from the Lord. Somebody give God some praise this morning. Oh, you know, well, how do I make all these things? How do I exercise this a little bit better, Pastor? You know, here is how you process the promise that God made. You follow what the Word says. And the word of God says that when your faith lines up with the word and when your faith lines up with his will, you have anything you're asking about. Amen. 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 Yeah. Because it was not a, Jesus said, the Bible says in John 15, 7, it says, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then anything you ask, you should have it. So what do you mean? What do you mean? In other words, if you abide in Jesus, you accept Jesus. Jesus is the Word. Amen. The Bible said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And what? The Word was God. So when you follow the Word of God, when you allow the Word of God to abide in your spirit. So now you are abiding in Jesus. Jesus is abiding in you. And whatever it is you need to happen in your life, if you believe it, have faith, no doubt you shall have it. Amen. But I caution you about something here. Be careful about what you're asking for. Because you don't want to ask for things for the wrong reasons. Amen. 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 And what do I mean by that? James, in the book of James, in the New Testament, James 4, 3, James says some of us pray for the wrong things. He says sometimes we're praying for things uh, for the wrong reasons. And what do I mean by that? James says some of us uh, fight when we don't get what we want. 
Some of us take from others the things we believe we ought to have. Amen? We take things that, uh, we, we, that somebody else possesses. In other words, you want it so bad you take it from somebody else. Because you want it. Because it's all about you. Amen? And then the Bible said that sometimes, James was telling us, sometimes we have not because we ask not. We don't ask God. We're going to ask everybody else. We're going to try to figure some things out on our own. But you can't, you know, you can't make it on your own. You need God. You know, and that's what's wrong with some of our young people today. They got a lot of young folk out there. As a matter of fact, uh, the deacon was talking about that this morning and some of the safety tips he was talking about. Death. What is death? Death when people, you take something that don't belong to you. Why are you taking something from somebody when you know it don't, you clearly know it don't belong to you because you want it so bad? Why didn't you ask God? Trust God. Believe God. When you see somebody that has something that you maybe you admire, he said, well, that's a nice dress she has on. Well, that's a nice suit he's wearing. That's a nice car he's driving. Your mind shouldn't tell you that you ought to go stick him up and take it. Amen. You say, Lord, I saw something that looked good, and I'd like to have something. Help me, God, to be the kind of person that you can bless me to have the thing that I need to have in my life. Amen? Amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Trust God to help you to be the best person you can be. But you're not asking God. And, and, and James is also telling us, you find it in James 4, verse 3, he's telling us that sometimes what happens in our lives, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask for the wrong reasons, that you may spend it on pleasures and lusts. You know, I want all the money in the world so I can have a good time. Uh, you know, I'm a man, look, man, for, baby, if I won the lottery tomorrow, man, I'm going out and buying me a boat, a car, a yacht, you know. I'm going to buy that whole building over there, man, have myself a party, you know. And you wonder why you never won the lottery. <laughs> because sometimes you're asking for things for all the wrong reasons. Now think about this. When you see there's a need, when, and I tell you this all the time. I say, if you can't do anything for somebody, you can always pray for them. Because you know there's a lot of things going on in the world. You know, you, you look at the news and sometimes there's always tragedy taking place, right? It was a building that caught on fire and it burned out the whole complex and now all those people are without. You know, and the Red Cross is showing up trying to give them food and give them some clothes. Now think about it. If you thought, say, well, man, if I had money, I could go and help all those people yes. make it at least through the night. Because you could do it. If you had millions, you could do it. You could turn people's lives around. So, what I'm saying is, what James is trying to tell you that, stop thinking about gathering things so much for yourself. But if you thought and you prayed for things so that you might be a help to somebody else, God will certainly honor and, and give you those things. Amen? Amen? In other words, the scripture tells us that Stop worrying so much about what you have need of. God knows what you have yes. need of. Yes. Amen. But if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added unto you. The kingdom of God tells us that we ought to be concerned about helping somebody else along the way. Because when you help somebody else, you're really helping yourself. Amen. Amen. You're helping yourself to blessings from God. Amen. When you become the best person you can be, God is going to continue to bless your life. All kinds of things are going to start to follow you. Amen. I'm worried about, you know, having a good time, you know, you, you end up just like, uh, what's your name was singing that song about, you know, once I lived the life of a millionaire, spending my money, oh, I didn't, but just as soon as my money got low, I couldn't find a friend, and guess what, I had no place to go, why, because nobody don't want you when you're down and out, amen? amen? But the thing is, when you're taking care of people, when you're taking care of situations, when you're fulfilling the needs of other people, God will continue to bless your life, amen? And I'm talking about, stop worrying about yourself. Not putting yourself before other people, but put other people before yourself, and God will start to add all kinds of blessings into your life. God will work things out for you. If you're sick, you start praying for somebody else, and watch how God heal you, amen? If you lose your job, pray for somebody 
somebody else and watch what God do. God's going to start blessing you and God's going to break something that was even better than the thing you had before. Because when one door closes, God has another door open ready for you. Amen. God has some blessings. You must abide in the truth by Jesus is the truth. I'm going to say this, y'all, and then we got to get out of here. I want you to understand that faith in God can move a mountain. Faith that moves mountain comes with expectations from Jesus. Christ said, when you stand, pray, and forgive. Amen? When you stand, pray, and forgive. In other words, that's one of the keys to getting blessed by God is learning how to forgive. Some people don't know how to forgive. The Bible said that when you stand up there and you're praying, ask God to forgive, give you a forgiving spirit. When people come, come against you, learn how to forgive it. Amen? Because let me tell you something. A lot of us don't like to forgive. We want to hold on. You don't need to hold no grudges. Amen? Forgive it. Forgive. Have a forgiving spirit. I don't care what happened, how bad it was, forgive. Doesn't cost you anything to forgive. And let me tell you something. When you forgive somebody, if they if they did something that something criminal against you, all right, and then they get arrested, and they getting ready to stand before the judge, and then the judge allowed a victim impact statement, allow you to go in there and say whatever it is you want to say, amen? And you can say that, but you can stand up and say, I forgive him for what he did. But guess what? That clears your conscience. That clears your path for yeah. God's blessings yeah. on your life, amen? It doesn't change the sentence that that perpetrator is going to get, amen? Because he's still going to get what he's got coming to him, amen? And everybody who's coming against you when people uh, perpetrate things against you in the kingdom of God, they're going to have to stand before God. So you don't have to worry about it. I forgive you, but you still got to stand before God for what you did, amen? Because God is the righteous judge. So it's not for you to judge and for you to forgive. Jesus said, that's why, Lord, forgive us of our trespasses and we forgive those who trespass against us. Prayer will increase your faith. Forgiveness will increase your faith. Forgiveness will bring about the blessings of God. But if you're not willing to forgive, God is not going to forgive you. But that's the thing you need the most. I'm here to tell you this morning. It doesn't work like that. You've got to be a forgiving person. If you're not forgive, neither will God forgive you. Heaven forgives all your trespasses. Don't you know that God is still sitting on the throne? Yes, 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 amen? Yes. But I don't know about you, but I need a few mountains moved in my life. Amen? I know that God has done some things that if he did it before, I know God is going to do it again. Amen? Because Jesus paid the price. One day out on Calvary, they hung him high and they stressed him wide. But I heard Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He made a way for us to move a mountain. He made a way for us to part a sea. He made a way for us to calm a storm. He made a way for us to tear down a wall. He made a way for us to walk through the fire. He, Jesus is answering, and he said, Father, let them know that they're doing something that they don't know what they're doing, but have mercy on their soul. God said, Jesus said, have faith in God. Does anybody here have faith in God? Does anybody here believe in God? So I'm telling you, whatever you speak, speak to that mountain and say, be thou removed. Have no doubt in your heart. God is ready to open up the doors and pour out blessings upon your life so much so that you can't even handle it. But I'm telling you, faith can move a mountain because faith when it's, when, it, when it's when it's a mountain that's in your life, I want you to know that faith can move the mountain when it is founded by God. Faith can move a mountain when it is formulated by God. Faith can move a mountain when it's fashioned by God. Faith can move a mountain when it's fortified by God. I'm telling you, confess, forgive, believe, and faith in God will move any mountain in your life. Come on and give God some faith. Have faith. Have faith. And I love it when Jesus said it. He said it's so plain and so simple and so clear. Have faith in God. I'm telling you this morning. Have faith in God. It's not about me. 
It's not about anything I'm saying. It is about God's word. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall last forever. And the word of God will marinate in your life if you have faith in God. Have no doubt. I don't care what it is you're dealing with. Have faith. Believe it. You shall have it. Amen? Amen. Don't get what it is. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Keep your faith in God. Yes. Keep your faith in God. Yes. And let me tell you something. God is not finished with you yet. Amen? There's a blessing coming your way. There's a great blessing. There's a, there's a blessing that's coming towards you. God knows you've been dealing with some mountains in your life. God knows you've been going through some trials and some tribulations. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to pray this morning. In this sanctuary, you're watching me right now on YouTube, Facebook, or at our website, gentillygreaterharvest.com. We're going to pray to God this morning. Anybody here ready to move some mountains? In yes, yes. Yes. Oh, God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus said that we just believe in you, Lord. And that we do because we have faith in you, God. And we trust God. We trust you, Lord. We believe in you. And I'm asking right now, Father, for every single person that's assembled here with me and everybody that hears my word, that hears my voice, I pray wherever they are, bring into their life the healing that they need. Bring into their life peace, love, prosperity. Father, touch every single soul yes, yes, yes. no matter where they are have mercy on them God forgive them of all of their sins and bless their lives and not only bless them but bless the families that they represent Father have mercy Father this morning we simply ask these prayers in Jesus name Amen Amen faith will move a mountain Amen? So you keep holding on to God. Keep trusting God. Keep believing God. He can work it out. And I'm looking towards a miracle. Amen? I, I, I just believe that God is getting ready to do a miracle somewhere, somewhere, somehow, for somebody. Amen? But all you got to do is keep on believing in God. Right now, let's just give God some praise this morning.